Hi, it's eSports Storyteller, and today we'll talk about the most unique tournament that exists in the eSports industry. Located in a big house-like studio, it has a cozy atmosphere where professional players compete for the prize pool and also relax and communicate in between the games. I'll tell you how it became one of the most iconic tournaments in StarCraft II history. It feels like home for both pro gamers and viewers. It's Home Story Cup. The history of this tournament actually started more than a decade ago. Dennis Gillen, better known under the nickname Take, was just a not-so-ordinary professional player in Warcraft 3. He gained fame as one of the best drama players in the game, but instead of focusing on the esports career, Dennis transitioned to being a commentator for the first drama esports TV channels such as Giga2 and ESL TV. With a couple of years of experience, Dennis then planned to host his own tournament and also a channel that would broadcast both high-quality games with best players around the world and also the unique atmosphere of friendly gaming sessions that we all had in our childhood or teenage years. You know, I'd love to be paid to go out and talk about a game I love and hang out with all my friends all the time. And that has never happened to you, Oh, it, oh, I'd love that, man. Like, if that was my job, oh. Uh. I mean, Ben, in all honesty, our, our games were, our careers are not very different. You got paid for years to be an EG to give interviews on tournaments while, you know, where did it go wow. wrong? Wow. <laughs> wow. That's, that's brutal. That's brutal. That was so good. That's brutal. 12 years ago, Dennis invited 8 StarCraft 2 players to participate in his first tournament. Take TV wasn't even a studio at that point, it was literally Dennis' apartment where it was all hosted. And that's why the event is called Home Story Cup. Four players were participating online, while others came to join Take on his coach and play from his place. Even though the tournament was extremely small, and such was also the prize pool of only $500, it immediately achieved a lot of success for its incredible format. Instead of professional casters, players would sit on the coach to comment on each other's games in a funny way, interacting with one another and making jokes or some serious analysis on what was going on. The whole idea of socializing and interacting with players and viewers was received greatly by the StarCraft 2 community. Another claw skewed up, Storm's about to finish. Can patience do this? He's playing for his tournament life, he backs away, Claw's getting good connections here. Oh, nice well, storm. storm 1 goes down, hitting most of the army, the Vikings are decimating the Claw's numbers, but have they bought enough time? I'm not sure, uh, uh, Zealot's running in on the Marauder! So the Storm's Stalkers suck. <laughs> the format of the tournament was an ordinary double elimination bracket, but it was the production and casual atmosphere that gave this tournament a unique feel. It was like a reality TV show, and that the interactions of the tournament players are shown all throughout the tournament. Cameras are set up in the relaxing area, and the players themselves are invited to join in casting, and accommodations such as an in-house chief or a pocket table provide a relaxed atmosphere. Later, there were many other activities and contests for guests and players, even including the swimming pool. However, the initial Home Story Cup was merely a trial, and most of these features were not implemented until the later Home Story Cups. Yeah. EG? So EG. So EG? Oh. Yeah. Wow. He's so BM. Why? <laughs> huh? Why no ceremony? What? I don't need ceremony. <laughs> because so EG uh, win. Don't so need. Today, just wow. to practice game? Really, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just hand check. Yeah. <laughs> the second Home Story Cup is when the tournament started gaining more international attention for having a bigger prize pool and also more participants. In Home Story Cup 4, South Koreans participated for the first time, and stream numbers for the event broke into the 60,000 concurrent viewers, around the same as most premier tournaments at that time, making Home Story Cup a remarkable event in StarCraft 2 history. Take TV invited a lot of famous players at that time, including Demaga, Cloud, Mana, and many others. And the tournament was also sponsored by Rocket. The tournament's immediate success then kickstarted the company and gave Dennis the opportunity to build a successful business. Since then, Take TV has moved to a 2,000 square meter studio and bar in Krefeld. And instead of a one-man show, there is a team of 30 people working behind the scenes. But the Home Story Cup, as we know, it started from the third edition. It was just another level compared to the previous two. Now with 32 players and $10,000 prize pool, with the most famous and skilled guys from the whole StarCraft 2 community. It was a total blast, as viewers would see their favorite competitors in such a home-like atmosphere and enjoy them interacting with each other. This is and was one and only tournament that shows the esports world from a different point of view.
We see MC moving his immortals out here. We've got the Void Ray coming down. He was able to pick up a couple of suits units, but it's not looking good for him. The mutas come in. It looks like they're picking up a lot of the air units up here. I don't know. We got the Ultra of the Fight. Uh, Ultra of the Front is fighting. The immortals are trying their hardest out here. We've got the Archons working away. The Ultra of the Front. It looks like Snoots is a lot of the units in the back, but the mutas are flying around, able to pick up an Archon. I don't know what's going on. We don't have very much Link Bike. We're coming to prevent MC here. It looks like the uh, Phoenix are flying around. He's able to push Snoot back. It's not looking good though for our MC here. It looks like he's about to move up the ramp, take on the natural. I don't know what's going on. We got the Starkers coming up right here. The mutas are flying and going to the natural. It looks like Snoots about to close the series out. Five. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> 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 and of course, such conditions were a perfect ground for many memes and jokes to be born. And since players and casters were not limited by any strict rules or needed to host the show in a certain way, it was even more entertaining. Uh, so many men, so many boys around esports. If we could, if we could get the twitters to rope in more females, and that's something people like Jeff James is totally would grow interested up. in. Yeah, well, I'm for fine. everybody else. I, in all fairness, Scarlett is here, best of both worlds. She actually bought me a Jack and Coke a little bit earlier. Um, absolutely lovely lady. And uh, what I'm saying, give me a couple more. If you had a job to be fired from, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there could have been up to 30 different casters on the coach throughout the tournament, including Koreans who barely spoke any English. Uh, uh, okay, guys. Yeah, I'm king. I'm king. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Let me break. It was also the place for some players to win their first Premier Tournament or to kickstart a successful career. Snoot, the best Norwegian player of all time, achieved his first big victory exactly during the Home Story Cup 6, where he just destroyed other players in the playoff bracket cementing himself as one of the best European players for the next couple of years. Despite having some controversial language and jokes here and there, Home Story Cup still attracted a lot of sponsors and attention, setting new records with each edition. Take TV also claimed that, quote, most of the time we get the feedback that our conversion rate is way higher than partners usually get, especially compared to higher budget events, the turnout is better for them most of the time. And it's probably because the whole tournament is more authentic and the community perceives the brand names in a brighter way, enjoying their contribution to such a gaming celebration. The pinnacle of Home Story Cup Evolution was the 10th edition. It was the time when StarCraft 2 had its highest numbers on Twitch and other social media. It took place at a different location in the Krefelds Club Königsberg, which really suits the Home Story Cup style. For the first time in the history of the tournament, matches were played in front of a crowd, and was also one of the rare tournaments which featured both StarCraft Brood War Legends, Flash and Jadon. The formula was now set in stone, it worked really well, and the next five tournaments were the most iconic and classic. They had an insane amount of great games, as well as jokes, impressions and just comic moments. Most of them were created by Geoff Robinson, better known as In Control. Sadly, he passed away on July 20, 2019, at the age of 33. Without him, Home Story Cup will never be the same. He was probably the second person alongside Take who made this event feel so special. Here are my top three highlights featuring In Control. Uh, so while we're paused here, I have a quick story. To What's tell. the story? It's very quick. I was standing uh, and I was gazing upon Bling, and we were kind of talking about whether or not his shoes and his pants were girly. Uh, he confirmed his shoes are from that female. They're from somewhere where Top girls shop. buy clothes. His jeans were not. And then all of a sudden, Apollo swoops up on me, and then the Muslim swoops up on me. And, you got and it was England at that moment in time <coughs> when the three of you combined your powers to speak more British than I've ever heard <laughs> in my entire life. And it, w it was like I helicoptered in <laughs> to some like Bavarian village who just didn't come <laughs> close to speaking a, uh, a modern language. Uh, he goes, top yep, top yep, and yes, of course, yep, top the board, and I was just like, what the? F I know each of you individually, I speak with you and I understand just fine, but together, <laughs> it's tea and crumpets and it the is. queen. <clears throat> that's that's, that's oh, the yes. queen you were If talking. I was asked to describe manner, in three words, you know damn well <laughs> it would be brutal, wrecked, savage. <laughs> and speaking of wrecked, I couldn't be more erect <laughs> to be casting <laughs> yet another gorgeous, beautiful, <laughs> sexual game of StarCraft II 
between these two people. One from France, and the other from Poland, where currently the end of my erection resides. All the way from here in Germany it originates, and it ends in Poland. That's how large my passion is right now. And don't, let me tell the story. Yep. I so it's say day word. one, uh, the whole day passes, we're really tired, a lot of us are jet lagged, we cast it all day. Uh, we didn't have a chance to eat for most of the day because the passion just kind of overtook us. We were down here casting the whole time or playing poker and ripping off Koreans. The <laughs> whole day was just going by. And at the end, grumpy old American in control was like, gosh, I'm really hungry, guys. We got to go. And it's late at night in Creffield. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Creffield shuts down at about 7 p.m. because most of the city is filled with old people. So that's when they go to sleep. Um, so there's nothing open, really, except for kebabs and McDonald's, maybe. And we're like, you think we can go to McDonald's? We had a driver, and he's like, yeah, yeah, you guys can go to McDonald's. We're like, okay, let's go to McDonald's. And we're driving there, and the whole time, we're like, no way, it's 1 a.m., there's no chance it's open, absolutely not. Uh, but we're getting closer and closer. We pull up to a street corner adjacent to the McDonald's, and it's like, it's pretty dark, but there's a couple of lights on. And we look at it, and we go, no fucking chance, no way, no way in hell. And our driver, Armin, goes, no, no, I think so, I think it's open. He's like, okay. So we pull closer, and he does something that to this day none of us understand, but it makes for a legendary moment in time. Instead of pulling up to the McDonald's, he stops in front of it. He turns around, he looks at us, and he goes, what do you guys want? And we all, we're all like, Armin, is it open? And he goes, yeah, it's open, guys. What do you want? And in this moment of vulnerability, our dreams gushed forth from all of us because we were like so hungry and tired and we're at this, this glorious McDonald's and I was like, I, Armin, I want five cheeseburgers. And he's like, he's like, you want five cheeseburgers, Jeff? I go, yeah, I want five cheeseburgers and a Big Mac. And he's like, okay. you can have it. Before no, no, we go on, no, no, before we go on, I do want to say this is actually true. Jeff is not saying this for the story. He truly totally wanted five cheeseburgers thank you, Kevin. Thank and a Big you. Mac. Because I would, I would lie and cut back. I actually said 20 cheeseburgers. No, it was, it was five. It's quite a bit. I would have had a heart attack and died. Uh, but then he asked the other people, he's like, Destiny, what do you want? Destiny's like, I just want a bottle of water. He goes, you can have it. Funka's in the back and he goes, Funka, you want ice cream? And Funka's like, yeah, I want ice cream. And he goes, do you want chocolate on it? And he goes, I'll have chocolate, okay? And he's like, Rotterdam, what do you want? Rotterdam's like, I'll have a menu and a Coke. Throw a Coke in there. And we're all like, yay. And he's like, okay, guys. Let's go to McDonald's. And I don't know why he stopped to get our orders. <laughs> then he drives seven feet forward, <laughs> and the fucking McDonald's is pitch black, super close. <laughs> super close. Not even close. And we're like, we're like, Armin, what did you see that made you think this was open? And he's like, I don't know, guys, the light was kind of on. And we're like, we're like, Armin, you got our hopes up so freaking high. And he pulls up and he's like, he's like, hello, is anyone in there? And he pulls up to the window and he honks the horn. And the whole time we're like, Armin, no way, dude. No chance in hell. And uh, we drove away. No McDonald's because it was super freaking close. And uh, that was the whole story. <laughs> it's a pretty good story, Jeff. Pretty good story. Uh. There were also a couple of worse years for the series. Some of the Home Story Cups were not as good in terms of viewership numbers due to many reasons, mostly because of StarCraft II losing its fanbase during 2015 and up until November 2017 when it went free to play. Also, Home Story Cup had to rely more on donations and crowdfunding to support the event, as it was quite costly to run. Now, Take TV includes a team of 30 people and a great level of production, which needs quite a lot of money. On the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the Home Story Cup, it took place in the resort area called Tropical Islands near Berlin. It was the biggest Home Story Cup with a prize pool of $53,000. And the funny thing is that Take actually wanted to organize in Las Vegas, but it was too costly to bring a tournament there, as well as the players. But the substitute location was also amazing, and the tournament was a great success. During COVID-19, Home Story Cup couldn't be held due to the restrictions. Yet it was reintroduced in a new forum called Stay at Home Story Cup. It was a smaller online tournament, which still featured a lot of great players, as well as a funny casting format. StarCraft 2 was not the only game that had tournaments. There were also Hearthstone and Warcraft 3 Cups organized by Take TV. And the good news is that Home Story Cup is still as active as ever. 
The next tournament is to be held in December this year, and the last edition scored decent viewers activity and told us on the great story. Now Cyril, probably the best player in the StarCraft 2 history, managed to win the whole thing with an incredibly long lower bracket run. And to this day, Home Story Cup is the most special tournament that esports has. And let's hope it will continue for many more years, and perhaps it will include even more games in it. That's it for our story. If you enjoyed it, subscribe for more esports content and write your opinion on the tournament in the comments. Have a nice day, good luck and have fun.